Good day, everyone. Welcome to our class. Today, I will be your science teacher, and I'm Teacher Sally. Are you ready to learn? If that is so, let's begin. Have you ever wondered how the land masses, the islands, and continents were formed? Did they just exist the way they are now, or the results of a long process and sequential events? In this lesson, you will learn about the plate tectonic theory. Specifically, you will identify the tectonic plates of the world and describe how these tectonic plates behave. Picture below is a map of the world's volcanoes and plate boundaries. What relationship between volcanoes and plate boundaries can be drawn from observing this map? That's correct! Plate boundaries and volcanoes are found in close proximity. The movement of Earth's plates creates volcanic mountains. But how does the Earth's surface change? The shapes and positions of the continents make up a very familiar image. The Earth's surface is a very dynamic place and has not always looked like this. Earthquakes, volcanic activity, and other phenomena have been changing the face of the planet for millions of years. The key geological theory that explains how the Earth's surface changes now and has changed in the past is called plate tectonics. So what exactly is the theory of plate tectonics and how was it developed? The theory of continental drift was developed over time due to the combined efforts of many pioneering scientists. The theory had to battle against many criticisms, but ultimately became one of the great milestones in our understanding of the Earth's surface. According to the theory of continental drift, the positions of the continents on the Earth's surface have changed over time. The shape and the geology of the continent suggests that they were once joined together. In 1912, Alfred Wegener, a German meteorologist, proposed a theory that about 200 million years ago, the continents were once one large land mass. Alfred Wegener was a key figure in changing ideas about the Earth's surface. Wegener suggested that Pangaea began to break up about 200 million years ago, and the pieces drifted apart to form the present-day continents. At the time, Wegener's theory of continental drift was dismissed by geologists because he could not provide a convincing explanation for how the continents were able to move. Now, what is Pangaea? Pangaea was a supercontinent at one time. Scientists use the similarity of rock types and fossil types that date to the same age to support their theory that the continents were connected to form a supercontinent. The map below gives just one example of areas on different continents that show the same fossils and rock types. Pangaea is a Greek word which means all earth. The illustration shows how the Pangaea evolved into how the continents look today. These Pangaea started to break into two smaller supercontinents called Laurasia and Gondwanaland during the Jurassic period. These smaller supercontinents broke into the continents and these continents separated and drifted apart since then. Is this idea somehow true? If you live during the Vaginer's time, Will you believe him? Again, Pangaea means all the earth or single landmass, and Pantalasa means all seas or huge ancient ocean. Wegener searched for evidences to support his claim. He noticed the feet of the edges of the continents on the opposite sides of the South Atlantic. His evidences to the continental drift theory includes the distribution of fossils in different continents, rock features, and ancient climates. Let us have a further study on these evidences. First, puzzle piece fit. 
Did it really start as one big landmass? It seems very impossible that the seven continents, which are currently thousands of miles away from each other, were actually connected pieces of a supercontinent. The most visible and fascinating evidence that these continents were once one is their shapes. The edge of the continent surprisingly matches the edge of the other. South America and Africa fit together. India, Antarctica, and Australia match one another. Eurasia and North America complete the whole continental puzzle in the north. Second is rock formations. Fossils found in rocks support the continental drift theory. The rocks themselves also provide evidence that continents drifted apart from each other. From the previous activity, you have learned that Africa fits South America. Rock formations in Africa line up that in South America, as if it was a long mountain range. How come that these rock layers in different continents line up together with layers that exactly match? The folded cape mountains of South America and Africa line up perfectly as if they were once a long mountain range. The third is fossils. Mesosaurus and Lystosaurus are freshwater reptiles. Fossils of these animals were discovered in different continents, such as in South America and Africa. It is impossible for these reptiles to swim over the vast oceans and move from one continent to another. Fossils were also found in Antarctica. Could it be possible that they existed in this region where temperature was very low? Or could it be possible that long before, Antarctica was not in its current position? The last evidence is climate. Glossopteris is a fern that grew in temperate climates. The places where these fossils had been found were once closer to the equator. Rocks containing these fern fossils had once been joined. Fossils are preserved remains or traces of organisms, such as plants and animals, from the remote past. Fossilized leaves of an extinct plant, Glossopteris, were found in 250 million years old rocks. These fossils were located in the continents of Southern Africa, Australia, India, and Antarctica, which are now separated from each other by wide oceans. The large seeds of these plants could not possibly travel a long journey by the wind or survive a rough ride through ocean waves. Next is coal deposits. Coal beds were formed from the compaction and the composition of swamp plants that lived million years ago. These were discovered in South America, Africa, Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, and even in Antarctica. How is a coal bed formation possible in Antarctica? The current location of Antarctica could not sustain substantial amount of life. If there is a substantial quantity of coal in it, Thus, it only means that Antarctica must have been positioned in a part of the Earth where it once supported large quantities of life. This leads to the idea that Antarctica once experienced a tropical climate. Thus, it might have been closer before to the equator. The question as to how the drifting took place left the continental drift theory blurry. Despite the evidences presented by Wegener, his idea that the continents were once joined together was not accepted by the scientific society until the 1960s. He was not able to explain how this drifting took place. This made scientists conduct further studies in search for the answer. Wegener died in 1930 on expedition in Greenland, while collecting evidence to further support his theory.